Hello, this is Jaxi from Jaxi Ball Trades on CR4 presenting on how to make a 555 timer with a blinking LED. Before launching yourself into any circuit building project, it is a good idea to familiarize yourself with the components and the schematic. All of the dark circles on the schematic represent nodes, which are just a fancy name for connections between two or more wires. There are three connections that should be connected to power, pin 4, to power, pin 8 to power, and the last one is pin 7 through the 6.8K resistor to power. Four direct connections should be connected to ground. Pin 1 is directly connected to ground. Pin 2 or 6 can be connected through the 10 microfarad capacitor to ground. And since pin 2 and 6 are electrically connected, it does not matter which pin connects to the capacitor to ground. Pin 3 is connected to ground through this LED. And pin 5 is connected through the 0.01 microfarad capacitor to ground. The first thing you're going to do to build this project is insert the 555 timer. Make sure that none of the pins are broken or bent before you start trying to put it into the breadboard. And when you put it in, Make sure that the pins line up and you just push it in. It might take a little wiggling at first. Some of them get really finicky. But you want to make sure that it goes over this little trench in the middle of the breadboard. And also, if you've noticed, I've put it kind of toward the bottom. There's a reason for this. I've made this circuit so many times that it's just better if I put it down here because I'm going to put the potentiometer up there where it's not going to interfere with each other. The next thing I'm going to want to do is put the ground connections into the board. And for this, it's just as simple as pin 1 on the board going to ground. I have this side going to ground and this side going to power. That way, it's just easier to just plug in the battery. Also, we notice that pin 8 goes to power, and also pin 4. I've cut all these wires ahead of time so that it's faster for me to do it this way. So, and you notice I have to put a wire across the gap because those pins aren't connected and just squeeze that one in there and there you go there's all the power and ground connections now the next thing I'm going to want to do is do the indirect connections these are the ones like where pin 2 goes through the capacitor to ground and if you can see I have an electrolytic it's got the negative side you probably can't see it too well, but electrolytics have a gray band which you have to make sure it go directly to ground. The other pin is going to be pin 3 going through the LED to ground, and what you want to make sure is that the flat side, in this case it's right here, you'll notice it's flat and smooth. If you go through one that's rounded, it's there's like a little ridge to it. So make sure you find the one. You can either eyeball it or feel it. It doesn't matter. And make sure that the flat side also goes to ground. Like so. The other thing that is also going to ground is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, but it goes through pin 5 to ground. And this I'm just going to take pin 5 to any row on my board. I'm skipping one because I'm going to want to have the pin that connects pin 2 to pin 6 running along this one. So I'm just skipping to this one. And I'm just going to add the ground connections like so all the way to ground. No, nope, I did it again. I went across the little chasm that's there. And that's very important so that it, you know it's going to end up lighting. The other connection that's an indirect connection to either power or ground 
It's a 6.8 kilo ohm resistor connecting from pin 7 to power. And then we got like so. Remember that when you count the pins on the chip, you go from top to bottom on this side, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and on this side you go from bottom to top, 5, 6, 7, 8. Try not to confuse those as you might burn the chip if you uh, make too many mistakes. Now I'm going to want to do the pin 2 to pin 6. Right now I'm just moving one of my earlier connections over so that it's got a free vertical lane for me to just insert this in. The closer the wires are to your board, the less hassle they'll be in the end. Because you're not, if you have too many like random wires just coiled up going around your board, it just gets messy for anyone to debug and you won't and there's a better likelihood that you'll end up not having it work because of something and something might get torn out so it's just better off just to do it right the first time and I'm now connecting to pin 6 maybe Okay, there we go. So now we have most of the connections. The only connection that we're missing is the potentiometer. Now, I have two that are the same length, and I'm just going to, two wires that are the same length, sorry, and I'm just going to insert them in to pin 6 and pin 7 attaching anywhere else on the board. If you notice, they're cascading, which is this one goes to this row, and this one goes to this row. And now I'm going to add the potentiometer. Oh. It doesn't matter which um, one goes to which, as long as one goes to the middle and one goes to the end. In the schematic, you'll notice that there's a connection going from an outer pin to the middle pin. You can do that. It doesn't matter. It's just there for schematic sake, but it's not necessary in this. So it's all built now, so all we have to do is connect it to power. And there's the ground. Notice I have a 9 volt battery with the 9 volt battery clip on it. Holder. Whatever. And oh, my leads are too short, which can be a problem. Now, if you notice, it's kind of blinking. It's blinking really fast. So I'm going to try turning the potentiometer. Now it's blinking so fast that it doesn't seem to have any off time. A way to fix this, I have also a 100K. So I encourage anyone making these projects to try different potentiometer values. And look at that. Look at how fast it blinks and then blinks really, really slow. This one is probably the best if you want to make it blink really slow with the 100 kilo ohm potentiometer. And this one will also be used in the next project, which is the LED with the speaker. I'm Jaxie from Jaxie of All Trades on CR4, bidding you good luck with your project and have a good day.